Hello everyone and welcome to this short video which is designed to help you as parents and carers support your children with their digital learning at home. We're going to look at how you can help your child to log into the Hub platform which is provided for all pupils in Wales and then how you can use just Too easy or J2E to engage your children in an online platform which they will also be using in school. So we'll start off in Google, of course other search engines are available. So we'll start off by searching for Hub HWB and when it comes up in a search engine it's almost always the top link. Click on Hub and that should take us to the Hub home page. And at the moment this is the page that everybody in the world can see whether they've got um, a login or not. So what I should say at this point as well is you can access the Hub platform on any digital device um, but it's easier on a laptop or computer if you're lucky enough to have one at home but it's also great on a tablet and it can be used on a phone as well although it does become a bit more challenging but just to let you know that you can access it on any of those devices. So if we move up to the login button and just click that so at this point, this is where you need your child's username and password. And it's possible that your child already knows their username and password. If they don't, then your school will probably have provided it for your child. If it's not known, then maybe you need to get in touch with the school and they should be able to let you know your child's username and password. So I'm going to be using a test account for this one. So I'll just type my username. So the username is always the surname of the child and then the first initial and then a number normally. And then it's followed by hubcumry.net, which can be a bit tricky to type. So I've got PMP1 at hubcumry.net. And then I'll say next. And then it asks for the password. So the children will have been told not to give their passwords out to anyone, but they're also encouraged to share it with their parents and carers and people who look after them at home so they can support them with their learning. So there shouldn't be a problem there. I'll sign in. So once I've signed in, it looks similar to how it looked before, but now I've got some new tools that have arrived over here. And there's two ways I can go in. I can either click from here or I can go up to the menu, but children tend to click because they're right in front of them here. And there's lots of tools, Office 365, Flipgrid, all sorts. But today we're going to be concentrating in Just Too Easy, J2E. So I'm going to click on Just Too Easy. And it will open up at what we call J2 Launch, which is the launch page for all of the parts of J2E. What you'll notice as well is at the top of the screen, look, we've got two tabs opening, and you'll notice that we start to get lots of tabs opening across the top. So you might need to keep an eye on that and uh, close down some tabs as you're going along. So I'm not going to take you all the way through J2E, but I'm going to show you some of the parts which might be a bit more important for you. And the first thing I'll show you is for our very young children. So when I'm talking about young children, maybe we're talking you know, five, six, and possibly seven-year-olds as well. So our foundation phase pupils, the, the younger children in our schools. And predominantly, the area they're going to use is JIT, this, this button here. And JIT stands for Just Infant Tools. And if I click on that, Again, your children may well be familiar with this when you start going through it with them. It always opens up on a writing page. And I can see it says write up at the top here, look. So write is the first option. But actually, in JIT, we've got write and paint, turtle, chart, pictogram, animate, branch and mix. So we've got all of those different parts just within that JIT um, button that you saw. So if I want to use write, I can choose a template if I want to. I 
can scroll up and down all sorts of different backgrounds. I might want to choose a an ocean background. And I can see that I've got a flashing cursor there ready for me to start typing. So this is designed so that young children can just type without having to worry too much about anything else. So I can see the ocean. Now over on the left hand side, I can do some very simple um, editing. If I click on, for instance, let's see, orange, I can change my writing to orange it to different colours there. Now when the children get a little bit older we can show them skills like if we highlight one word and I change that then it will just change the colour of that one word. In the same way I can change the text size and make my writing a little bit bigger or I can change the style as well. I've also got over on the left hand side here some words which might be helpful when I'm doing my typing. And what you'll find is when you hover over the words, you've got a little voice bubble there. And if I touch that, she, it will read the word she to my child. And if I click the word, it will add it to my writing. And so I don't want the word she in there, but that can be really useful um, for word lists and if I click through look I've got all sorts of different word lists that I can use to help uh, with children's writing. Up at the top there it's called write but if they want to rename it I can see ocean work. There we are so I can put a little name there and very important when I've done my work or even when I've just started my work I'm going to save and I can see I've got some buttons across the top here and the save button is this orange circle with the disk in the middle. If I click on save and what you'll notice is when you do click save you get a little um, picture showing that it's actually saving. Once I have saved it, it dulls out, greys out until I start typing again. So if I put a full stop there now can see it's ready there for me to save again, reminding me that I need to save. So that's how I can use write. If I just pop across to the next one, which is paint, this is a very simple little tool. This time I'm going to choose a blank page instead. And in paint, I've got the ability to draw using different colors, and I can also drag different clip arts in as stamps. So if I wanted a picture of a lion, for instance, in this case, I can click on the lion and then I can place the lion wherever I want to on the screen. Yeah. I can also paint, so I can drag the size of my paintbrush and choose the color and paint with a brush. And there's also some nice little tools down here where you can add some textures as well. So this is sort of a grass texture, which I can draw some grass there. So you can create some really lovely effects on here. Again, make sure that we're saving our work every time. So I won't go through all of these. They're all worth having a really good look at. You can make some graphs, you can do some nice little animation. So what I'm going to do now is I'll make sure I've saved that work and I'm going to close the tab down that it's in. So I've got this tab open, I'm going to close that tab. And I'd like to show you where the work was saved. So we've clicked save twice, haven't we? If I go to my My Files, so this is really important. This is where the children's work is stored. If I click on My Files, I can see that I've had two pieces of work that I've saved today. I can also see all of the work that I've done before. And if I wanted to go back to one of those pieces of work to work on it again, I could just click and it would open straight up for me for me to carry on. So I'll just click on the tab again, turn that off. 
So I've gone back to my J2 launch tab again. So we've looked at my files, we've had a short look at JIT. So there's one other area I'd really like to show you, and that is J2 Blast, which is a nice little tool. If I click on J2 Blast. So we've got three tabs across the bottom, SATS Blast, so those are based more for English pupils, but um, they're worth having a look at. They've, they've got some um, maths activities which you can do with your children. But at the top here we've got Spell Blast and Times Tables Blast. So if I go to the Times Tables one, I'll show you this one. So in here we can go live against the world and compete against other people if we want to. But a lot of children just like to use the practice. So I click here. It will ask me which level I want to do. So it won't force a child into any particular level, but you can choose. And you can see that as the levels go up, you can see which times table it will be testing. So if I stick on twos for now, I'll just show you how it starts. So if I say continue, it says six times two, which I think is 12. There we are. And I can see my rockets on its way to the planet at the end. You can see how that one works. Just click the home to go back again. So that's TT Blast. There's also Spell Blast, which is similar to TT Blast, but this time obviously spelling. So again, you can compete against other people if you really want to, or you can just practice. So if I say click here, so I can choose words that I'd like to have a go at spelling, but also it might be that your school has shared spelling lists with your pupils, with your children. And if they are shared, then you'll see them in that list but not to worry if they're not because you've got lots and lots of words to have a practice of and when you do choose a spelling list 10 8 9 10 so i start and i try and spell the word 10 nap the baby is having a nap okay so that's j2 blast and well worth having a look at with your children so we've had a look at JIT, we've had a look at J2 Blast, and we know where things are stored in my files. So if your children are a little bit older, they might be doing some work in J2 Data, which is databases. Really fantastic tool, that one. They might be looking at J2E5 as well. And they may also be looking at J2 Office, where you can do more office type uh, activities. So that's a really quick overview of J2 Launch and J2E. And I hope it's been useful.